Hello everyone, this is Jeffrey G97 and welcome to the video. Uh, today's episode is I'm going to be using the Honda Beat around Tokyo Expressway uh, with its new 1.36 uh, patched setup. Uh, now if you saw the thumbnail, this is going to be the ultimate build. Uh, so you got, guys have to be a level 50 uh, in order to get the ultimate parts. Um, other than that, if you have the ultimate parts from the car just by being lucky and winning it from the tickets, um, you could, that could also work as well. Uh, but I do recommend you being uh, collecting level 50 uh, just to get those parts. But anyway, uh, I'll show you guys the full build, uh, so let's get straight to it. So, uh, the first things first, uh, you need the car, uh, but it's very easy to find. Um, right now it's currently at the used car dealership, uh, so it's right up here, right above the cafe tab. You're going to click on the used cars uh, tab, and then once the screen loads in, uh, it'll be the second row all the way to the right. It'll be right below the Pontiac uh, Firebird Trans Am. Um, here's all the stats for the car. Now if you guys are not too sure what a K car is, uh, this is basically what this car is. Um, so if you're struggling on the K car lightweight, races I definitely recommend you trying this car out um, even without the engine swap this car was really good uh, to use in the K car uh, events uh, but you can see low horsepower 63 horsepower very small engine uh, very lightweight um, so no, nothing really too outlandish for this car it's a very simple basic car um, and as you can see the price is very very cheap just about 16,000 credits um, so that's how you get the car. I do recommend getting this car right now. Um, even it doesn't matter if you want it to use it for the K car races or for this build. Um, go ahead and purchase it uh, whenever you do so. All right. Next thing I'm gonna do is show you guys the engine swap itself, and also going to add the white body to the car. Now, in order to have to have access to the engine swap, you have to be level 50 in order to buy this. Now, if you guys are curious to see what the engine is for this car and just see if you have the uh, engine for it in your tuning parts in your garage, uh, then I'll show you uh, the engine. So I recommend pausing the video and just check out your garage, check out your tuning parts and see if you have the engine K20C1-Civic-20. Uh, you can see if we install this engine, there's a lot of buffs that comes with the engine. The only thing in the red is the weight. Uh, but you won't even tell the weight's there uh, just by how majorly the big buffs are for this car. I mean, of course the weight to power goes from 11.87 down to 2.68, 2 which is pretty impressive. Not to mention the horsepower itself bumping to 315. It's work up to 295, so this is a really good strong uh, buff uh, when you buy this engine very affordable as well to do the engine swap as well so um, really recommend doing this um, if you can buy it if not I hope you have the engine for it um, when you dig it from the engine roulette ticket system and just for a small fee for about 5,000 credits we're gonna go ahead and add the white body to the car uh, it's gonna add just a few points to the car uh, but it's nothing really too significant I'm just gonna go ahead and do that to the car as well so that's basically stage two done uh, with the build. All right, so this right here is going to be optional. If you guys want to follow me in the game, here is my GT7 uh, gamer profile, uh, Jeffrey GT7 YT. Uh, the best way to look me up is I put a lot of Tokyo Expressway photos in my uh, profile. Um, so I'll be using this livery right here. It's the Spoons uh, Motorsports uh, livery. It's a little bit different than what you think of the Spoon Sports livery. Here it is right here. Um, looks really nice, has a very interesting look. Of course you have the iconic yellow and blue, uh, but you also have the mix in with a little uh, blackish gray color on the hood. Uh, of course a little uh, Japanese sponsors as well on the car as well. I like the number 12. It does remind me a lot of what Ryan Blaney drives for his cup car. So. Now, if you do not want to use a delivery, which is totally fine, um, I can understand that if you don't want to use a delivery. Uh, no problem. I'm going to show you guys the parts uh, that's in this car if you want to uh, basically follow this setup 
all the way through. Um, and if you want to use your own livery or someone else's livery, uh, that's totally understandable as well. Um, but I like how it looks, very unique, especially that big old moto uh, decal on the side of the car, also on the hood as well. So, without no further ado, let's now head to the car customization. So I can show you guys the parts for this car uh, if you want to use it for your own livery. Alright, so here we are at car customization. We're going to start off with the wheels, uh, just to get that knocked out of the head first. Uh, the wheels are Spoon Sports SW388. Um, basically, leave everything standard. Uh, so that's basically everything we see standard uh, that you'll need for the car. Uh, for the custom parts, uh, the front is going to be Type A. Now, if you're curious to see what Type B looks like on the car, uh, it basically transfers a little bit more for carbon fiber uh, splitter on the front bumper, which has a pretty nice look to it. If you want to do that, uh, side A, side B is the same thing. Has a little carbon fiber uh, strip uh, side the car, and for wing, it's going to be custom wing set. Uh, you're going to have the wings at the medium. Uh, the end plate is going to be type 6 if you want to follow that as well. And for the optional stuff, racing items, type B for the hood pins. The tail hook is type A, uh, but most crucially the roll cage is type B. Uh, other parts, this is optional as well. Here's the headlights. Uh, set to warm, you guys can either keep that color or change whatever color you want to. Uh, license plate standard and that is basically it for the car customization now to the tuning parts uh, whatever my cursor lands on is what you'll basically need for the setup so you need weight reduction stage 1 from sports for club sports uh, bore up high lift camshaft weight reduction stage 2 semi racing racing crankshaft play customized computer high rpm turbocharger Fully customizable LSD, uh, weight reduction stage 3, and increased body rigidity. For racing, stroke up, engine balance tuning, polish ports, anti lag system, racing muffler, racing L filter, racing intercooler, racing exhaust manifold, racing brake pads and brake kit, brake balance controller, fully customized suspension, racing clutch and flywheel, fully customizable racing transmission, and right here could be optional. If you guys want to do this, um, you can either have these three racing tire compounds, even though I do recommend the hards over all three of them. If you're curious, uh, the hards, they last about, give or take six laps. The softs, about three, more like two. And for the mediums, uh, they're about good for five laps. Uh, then again, the hards could last probably seven laps, but I do recommend uh, the hards whenever you do switch over. Now, I do recommend also for the extreme, uh, when you start to race, you start off the race on intermediates. Um, I'll get to that later when we do the setup to explain why you want to do that. Um, but anyway, if you guys want to have ultimate parts, like I said, you have to be a collector level 50 in order to buy them. Uh, okay, uh, and you just have the titanium. Uh, connecting rods and pistons in the high lift camshaft S. Alright, so here's the setup. As you can see, for my current setup I'm using for this video, I'm using racing mediums. And I'll explain later in the race why the case is that. Here's a new engine to the far left. Of course, here's our tires I'm using medium, which is a little bit of a risk, but I'll explain why during the race. Uh, fully customized suspension. Um, I do recommend you guys following the numbers on the grid. Now, if the car still feels a bit loose still in the race, uh, what you could do, you can adjust the body height adjustment. Uh, that can help the car to not be as loose. Uh, so will the empty row bar, the adapting ratio, both the compression and expansion. That can help with the car. Also, you could probably add tail angle to the rear as well. That might help it stable it if the car is loose. Uh, fully customized for the differential, I recommend the 5560 five, method, 5 for torque, 5 acceleration, and 60 for braking. Uh, for downforce, you're going to have it all the way, max all the way. 100 for the front, and 200 for the rear, so you're going to set all maxed out. Uh, you need the ECU set to full control computer, 
We'll leave it at 100 for your output adjustment. Fully customizable racing transmission. Uh, really recommend sending a 380. That way you can get as much speed through the straights as possible you can. I'll explain also in the race later as well. Um, the top, top speeds you'll be traveling as well. Uh, one thing I did forget is also you can get some ballast. I didn't buy it, but I do recommend you getting ballast as well from the uh, tuning shop. And make sure you put the position more toward the front uh, if the car is still not acting right. Uh, that way you can add weight to the front to help stabilize the car. High RPM turbocharger for the turbocharger. Anti-lag system set to strong. Racing intercooler. Uh, for the intake and exhaust, all categories set to racing, so that's your air filter, your muffler, and your exhaust manifold. Uh, of course, the brakes, we went through this racing brake pad kit and racing pads. Um, brake controller, I recommend set to negative 5, that way the brake force is always set to the front. That way they can help the rear tires not to be as worn as quickly, because the, the rear tires will easily wear out. Uh, resting for the clutch and flywheel and everything you see on the screen is really neat as well. Now you do see the high lift camshaft S and the titanium connecting rods and pistons. Those two parts are exclusively for the ultimate. Uh, so you have to be level 50 in order to get those. Um, but the Z will still work without those but you won't have as much horsepower. Um, which actually might be better um, in the course body work weight reduction stages 1 to 3 increase body rigidity. All right. So, the other setup I'm going to quickly show you, the other way of doing this, is if you don't want to do the, the mediums, you can always start the intermediates, and this is what I recommend doing. Uh, for the racing intermediates, you're going to start the race on racing intermediates. Here's a look at the stats, what they do if you do equip them. Um, now, the bad thing about the intermediates, they only last about a lap, at the most two. If you do stretch it for two laps, I do recommend turning on traction control on. Uh, so that way when you're in those turns, uh, you actually will have control in the turns and not let the car uh, get out of shape and it spinning out in circles. Uh, because, trust me, the tires in this particular race, for some reason, they just are easily chewed up. Uh, which is quite annoying. So after you do change a uh, lap two, if you want to stretch it, I recommend changing to racing hards. Um, and then you should be able to last to lap seven. And then you change them again to another set of racing hearts and stay on them for the rest of the race. Now, if you do, if you want me to see this gameplay of me doing a strategy, no problem. I did this all the way back in update 1.34, and the setup still works. Um, so, if you want to click on the top right of the corner, to, if you want to check that video out, if this particular video doesn't work out, then you can come back and just click on that tab right there, and hopefully. Uh, that setup and basically that race would be better for you. Uh, but here we are, the first lap. Now you can see we're going to make this pass. We're going to lift the throttle, let gravity take control of the car, and then go back on the racing, li racing line and get back on the throttle. Now this main stage I'm doing here is we're driving in fuel map 2 at the moment. Uh, there's really no need to push the car. All I'm just basically doing is basically surviving the first two laps. Uh, because the very first lap, as we all know, is the most treacherous lap in the race and if you guys have done the S license the very last mission where you're driving the Porsche 97 k at Spa and if you just barely at the slightest inch touch the wet part of the track then you're basically done so that's basically the same thing through here so if you do want to start to race on mediums or hards or even softs uh, just make sure you take the car easily it does drive decently well. Um, I just recommend you just driving it at least maybe 60-70% uh, force. Uh, I mean you, you have a huge weight advantage so you should easily keep up with the main leaders. Um, as we're just staying behind the Honda at the moment but we will pass the Honda when we hit the tunnel. Um, but the car is very smooth however when the rear tires begin to be halfway worn, for some reason, the car will want to, won't have as much traction, it'll want to drift, and it'll be very loose. So just keep that in mind. If you do this run, uh, if you want to push it 
car for th three laps as we just barely saved the car right there. Um, that's what I recommend doing and then try to find a comfortable way to kind of minimize and try to control the tires in the car once the car is halfway, the rear tires are halfway worn out because you will feel a huge difference uh, when that does happen. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward that to lap 5. You can just see the tires are just basically they're done. Um, and you'll just see here we actually made a mistake during the lap and you can just see there's like no grip whatsoever um, over seven seconds slower this lap uh, we kind of hit the wall we lost a lot of time and you can just see that main straight when that car travels so much that much, huge speed that's what basically chews up the tires uh, so this particular run I debated to switch to hards or mediums um, at the last second I chose mediums uh, now you can see we still got we can make it all the way on fuel if we pass a little icon on the screen, which is great. This car actually has very decent fuel mileage, but the tires itself is just horrible. Now, I, I knew that these tires weren't going to last, so there was no way I needed to fill the fuel all the way up. So, we're going to fast forward again, lap 9, and again, they're dead. They're in horrible shape. Uh, probably would have been better if I would have done hards. Um, so... I mean, if you want to do this, you can. I just don't recommend doing this. This is more like a lesson video on what not to do in this particular race. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and just do what you see on the screen, then go ahead. Um, maybe you can just capitalize on my, mis my mistakes I did. And I did switch to sw uh, softs. Uh, so lap 11. Uh, here we are with a hot lap. Just give you a quick hot lap guide around this, the race itself. And I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be careful and just show you guys the pinpoints of when the brakes and stuff. I'll make sure and slow down the footage. So we found ourselves in a very awkward spot as we're braking very hard. Uh, very hard braking the first turn. You're going to go all the way down the third gear. I uh, tried to be careful to pass the Honda. It was an awkward lane. And unfortunately, since we we're still in kind of a cold tires with the softs, uh, hit the wall. We received some damage. Uh, so we lost a good bit of time, but this is still going to be a very fast lap, but considering uh, having damage and if we would have been able to been clear, uh, this lap would have been a lot faster. Um, so sorry if I didn't tell you exactly how to get that turn, but I will just go around. Uh, so basically this turn, you're going to stay in fourth gear, break a little bit once you go underneath the bridge, underneath the shadow, then you're going to play the throttle just a little bit. Uh, we just barely hit the wall right there, that's why we kind of are in a weird arc. Uh, we just barely gained a little bit right there. Half braking right there as well. Uh, this car has really good grip uh, through these turns. Uh, again, you're going to brake once you hit the 50 meter sign. Uh, stay in fourth gear, that's what I recommend doing. Uh, that way you have somewhat control with the car as well. Plus it has a really good natural flow uh, when you do this. Uh, the next big thing is going to be braking right here. When you get to this bridge, still in fourth gear. It'll be from full braking to half braking, and then halfway through the apex, half throttle to full throttle, uh, full commitment, and then through here, you're going to brake after we pass the 100 meter sign. Uh, just trail braking a little bit, and then halfway to the turn, half throttle to full throttle, uh, staying close to the barricade just to get as much speed as possible. Then through here, we're going to brake at the 100 meter sign, heavy braking, uh, still in fourth gear. We're going to let gravity take control. Halfway through the turn, uh, full throttle, half throttle, brick again. Now we shifted down to third gear. Halfway through the turn, you can see the accelerations go from half bar to full bar. And then through here, it's going to be full throttle going down the exit ramp. As we now head to the tricky double right hand turn, you're going to brick right here, right as you see, get close to the 200 meter sign. Uh, you're going to brick, trail brick a little bit, and then you'll be going all the way down to second gear. Uh, just basically stay on the dry part of the track, as you see here. Also stay close to the curbs, that can also be a big up to you. Uh, half throttle to quarter throttle uh, through here as well. Uh, make sure you kind of keep the car straight as we get a little bit loose, but thankfully save the car. Uh, really up a second through here. And the rest of the lap, you're going to be full throttle, uh, which is a quick hot lap through Tokyo Expressway. Could have been a bit cleaner, uh, but we had those two mistakes. Uh, we're going to cross the finish line. It's going to be a 155.8. 
uh, but give or take, if we didn't have an incident, uh, probably a low 155. Uh, again, the rear tires are once again completely done. Uh, but we had enough fuel to get through the race. Um, as we cross the finish line, it's going to be a 24 54 for our race total. Um, very quick, um, but surprisingly, it's slower than our last time we did at uh, version 1.34 when I did a 24 45. Um, so like I said, if you want to check that video out, I recommend doing so if you don't want to do this method. Um, but we got the car clean, um, even though we hit the ball, that didn't affect our clean race bonus. Uh, so that's that. Well, hope you guys enjoyed the episode as we get to see the lovely zebra prints on the interior. Um, hope this video helps out. Hope the setup is also help out too. Um, like I said, if you don't want to do the racing mediums uh, strategy, changing it to another set of racing mediums and then changing to racing softs, uh, that's fine. Um, kind of learned my lesson by doing that. I recommend doing why I did in version 1.34. Um, so hopefully that 1.34 feed will be a big up too. Um, if you guys enjoyed the episode, uh, why not subscribe to the channel as I do my best to upload daily. Um, to my channel um, like I said hope this helps as well um, and if you guys do want to turn on the notifications on uh, when you do subscribe that way you can be posted on my uh, both my community stuff and my videos when they do drop again hope this helps and hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I'll see you guys later take care <laughs>